And the militias are certain that they can defeat the British Army because they have this revolutionary fire and spirit. And they argue that one man with that sort of spirit is worth a hundred British regulars. One such man who comes to Massachusetts is a fearless officer from Connecticut. His name, Benedict Arnold. A man intent on doing great things in the coming war. Arnold has a bold military plan for the Patriot cause. Arnold convinces the Massachusetts Provincial Congress to send him on a mission that will grab personal glory for himself and desperately needed ammunition for the rebels to capture the guns at Fort Ticonderoga, the massive but loosely guarded British garrison in the upper reaches of New York. As Arnold sets out on his quest to capture the fort, he hears that another soon-to-be-famous name is driven by the same idea. Ethan Allen, a hard-drinking, hard-living frontiersman from Connecticut, couldn't be more different from Benedict Arnold. Allen has been engaged by Connecticut's Congress to rally his personal militia for its own mission to Fort Ticonderoga. These are the notorious Green Mountain Boys, who had been fighting their own war of independence against New York settlers. The Green Mountain Boys jump at the opportunity to take on the British. Taking separate paths, Allen and Arnold, each with his own orders, head towards Fort Ticonderoga. Arnold is alone, expecting to recruit men along the way. Allen and his men are already preparing the attack. Their paths cross 30 miles from their target. Arnold presents Allen with his Massachusetts orders and assumes he will command the operation. Allen, full of swagger as always, all but laughs in Arnold's face. The Green Mountain Boys were personally loyal to Allen, which Benedict Arnold found out to his chagrin when he arrived and tried to take over the attack on Ticonderoga. And they put down their guns and they said they were going to march home, that they would only fight for Ethan Allen. Arnold grudgingly agrees to conduct the raid with these men, but finds himself relegated to second in command. It is a humiliating confrontation. In the pre-dawn hours of May 10th, 83 Green Mountain boys and 50 Massachusetts militiamen sneak up on the British stronghold. The 50 sleeping redcoats inside have gone undisturbed in the wilderness for so long they are totally unprepared for what's about to hit them. It's over in minutes. The British soldiers surrender without a fight. The fort's valuable artillery stores now belong to the rebels. What happens next turns Arnold's stomach. Allen's men find 90 gallons of rum go on a three-day binge and tear the place apart, leaving Arnold to mop up after them. But the worst insult comes when Allen writes to Arnold's superiors in the Massachusetts Congress. Allen brazenly takes complete credit for the operation. He keeps all the glory for himself and purposely makes no mention of his rival, Benedict Arnold. For Arnold, it's a wound more devastating than being shot. <laughs> 